Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to the Rare Plant Shop. You may or may not have seen the tour that I did for you guys last year. Back then, I probably had around about a thousand plants, I think. This year is a little bit different. We've scaled up considerably, and we're now sat at around somewhere between six and seven thousand plants. So there's quite a bit more in here than what you saw last time. Anyway, there's a ton of plants that we probably have to get through, so I think it's best to just start showing you around. This is the first aisle in the shop. There's quite a lot in here and I'm not gonna be able to show you everything that's up here because I'm not tall enough and I think we would be here all day. So I'm gonna do my best to simply show you things that we can get to from eye level. But in this aisle, we mainly keep Anthurium. That's quite a recent addition. We've done a lot of rearranging recently. We do have Monstera on this side. Yeah, it's kind of all over the place, but I will start probably from over here. So we'll start with this tray right here. This is as good a place as any. This here is Syngonium Pink Splash, and you will notice a lot of color differences in the leaves. Leaves such as these here, these much paler ones, these were basically present on the plant when we got them in. Since then, because I've had these quite a while now, I think I've had these three months, easily three months, probably more, the new leaves are growing in this really cool, color popped pink color like it's not just pink and green anymore like this leaf here for example it's a total wash of pink and i think that they're really thriving in here i think they really enjoy being in here and generally i grow syngonium in here quite well because i think they just like the light a lot more this here is philodendron florida beauty there's quite a few plants in here and to be honest, they're pretty unruly because we use them as mother plants. So what we tend to do is we let them grow, we let them do their thing, and then we take head cuttings and then we root those. So you do have a plethora of leaves in different states. This one here is very pretty. This is brand new. It hasn't even hardened off yet. Really, really nice. It's almost half and half, but it's still got some flex throughout. It's just generally looking really cool. Some of these are bright yellow, not so good. We don't like that so much because we need a good balance of variegation to keep things just generally healthy and growing. So this one here is probably going to have to get cut back a little bit. So there's a little job on my to-do list once we've finished. Here we have a boatload because there's actually this tray and this tray. This is Anthurium crystallinum. This is a very, very recent import as of a few days ago. So being brutally honest with you, they look great now, but they're probably not gonna look great forever. They may drop some leaves. They may look a little bit nasty. They may go back to stumps before they come back and look beautiful. So these plants here are probably gonna remain with me for quite a while. They're really, really beautiful though. Really, really pretty plants. They're one of my favorite Anthuriums. I think they're absolutely fantastic. They size up really well. I just love them to death. That's probably why I have two trays, because I love them so much. So obviously here is more of the same thing. Down here, because obviously we have more than just what is in front of me. This here is Philodendron Paraiso Verde. It's a really interesting plant. It's not for everyone though. It does grow pretty gangly. So the petioles on the plant can be quite long. It does have a lot of aerials in this case. But the cool thing that most people like about these plants is they I don't know how you describe it. They have like this mint, mottly kind of vibe to them. As I say, it's not for everyone, but I think you either love it or hate it. These are really, really good and they grow so quickly. They're probably growing a little bit too quick for me to be able to propagate them, if I'm completely honest. So my honest opinion on this plant is it's fantastic and it grows very, very quickly. So if you're looking for a quick grower, I can totally recommend them, to be quite honest. 
Down here, this is a really interesting tray. We have a mysterious one missing from the bottom. I don't know when that happened. <laughs> There's like one missed. But this here is Anthurium Forgetii. Really, really gorgeous plants. They don't size up too quickly. So if you want a smaller one, I think these can remain with you a lot longer before you seem to have any space issues or anything like that. One of my favorites. They're, they're unique in the sense that you don't get any ears on the plant here. The top of this just remains really round and disc-like. So that's the coolness that you get with these. That's what makes them unique and what makes them very, very beautiful. There's some more crystals. We needn't talk about those. Here we have a little bit of a mixed bag. These plants, these large boys here are Anthurium Magnificum. Really good growers as well, love those. Again, these are recent imports. So being totally transparent with you, while they look really sexy now, they may not stay this way. They may drop leaves. They may go back to a stump. It is what it is. Moving on from that, we have a new plant that I've never brought in before. This is a new one for me. It doesn't look its best. There's a little bit of moss on the leaves there, but this is what I think to be Anthurium debilis. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but that's what they are. I think I have one, two, three, four, five of these. Now I normally do this when I don't really know how a plant is gonna behave. I do this to test out if the plant is tough, if it's gonna die on me, if it's really viable for me to propagate and keep and just generally live with. If it's not viable, then I won't buy any more. So we will see how this goes. Maybe I might get more, maybe I won't. It really depends. Obviously we have some more Anthurium forgetii there that have kind of overlapped from the last tray. Down here, we have a few things. Looks like we have a few more Crystallinum here. We have some more Forgetii here. These three on the front are what I think to be Bessii Af. Um, again, this is a new thing I'm bringing in to see how they fare because I don't know how they're gonna do these. Again, recent imports, so they are turning slightly. This one's doing better than the other two, actually. This one's not looking as good, but this one's definitely Venia. So when these grow back, it could be really interesting to see how these do. While my cameraman's already on his knees, <laughs> I will show you this tray. Honestly, this is an amalgamation of totally different anthuriums. Some of them are grown from trunks. It's really a mixed bag. Like over here, I have some Anthurium peltigerum that are recently, you know, imported. So again, we have a lot of transit damage. We have some leaves that are probably going to go, which is a real shame because this is a really cool Anthurium. It's a little bit like Forgetii, only it's quite rubbery. So it's still round along the top, but you get some more, I don't know, you just get some more chunk with it. So it's a really cool one. Not the easiest ones to take care of though. They can be a little bit, a little bit finicky, but yeah. Mixed bag, there's not much to say about it. Some things are still rooting. Some things are now being left out in the air to create foliage. This is, it looks like Magnificum, is it? Yeah. Yeah, this is Magnificum here. There's an old leaf. It's growing well, it's growing a new leaf. That's all looking really, really good. If I come up here, it looks like we have some Regal yep. in this tray here. I think it's all Regal. I think this is one tray. So we have some new foliage coming in. Again, this is a recent import. So what you see here may not look excellent in a few days. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. I honestly find it just depends on A, the plant that I brought in and B, just the entire shipment process. So was it delayed? Was it too hot, too cold during the shipment? So much can affect it. It's almost pointless to guess, to be honest. So moving on up here, now these are almost ready to leave me. Obviously there are some old leaves with some transit damage on, but generally these, you know, health wise, they are ready to start going out. What I tend to do is that the more recent stuff, I tend to store at eye level. So all of these are more recent. And then as we move up through the shop, things that have been with me a little bit longer that are closer to unfortunately leaving me, they get moved up so we can focus our attention on the things that need more attention. And that's how we work out what's ready to go out. So these here, this is Anthurium Warraquinum. This is a beautiful leaf actually. I've only just noticed this. This is a lovely long thin boy. He's really, really pretty. Next to that, these have been with me a really long time. This is Anthurium Crystallinum in all of its beautiful glory. 
These are probably ready to go out on the next run, I think. I think they've been with me long enough now. They've been with me several months. There is a slight story to these. It turns out that these were actually lost in transit for about three or four months, which I know seems a little bit crazy, but they really were. It just went missing. I think it was in the height of COVID and everything else. It was one of the several boxes that went missing. But we got them, we rehabbed them. They're finally now in a state where they're growing and they're more ready to, to leave basically. So I'm really, really pleased that we were able to save those. So here we have a lovely little tray of more Anthurium Forgettii. I mean, if that doesn't do it for you, I don't really know what will. That's, oh my God, that's so gorgeous. <laughs> Next to some really beautiful, really big Anthurium Regal. And these are such pretty plants. The veining on these guys is really unique. And I always find, I nearly always find with this plant specifically that no regals are the same. I always find that the leaves just present that little bit differently with the veining. They're just not, I don't know, they're just not as consistent as some other plants. So you can really get some really interesting ones the more you look around. Like this one on the left and this one on the right, I would honestly say they're presenting a little bit differently to me. Maybe it's my eyes, I don't know. I feel like the veins here are a little bit more downward pointing and the veins here are a lot more lateral. So you get a really good variation on the different leaves and I love that. So down here, a little bit of a scenario where <laughs> we're just, we're basically growing out some seedlings and they've gone through a little bit of a hit. They're not the strongest of plants. We have some absolutely stunning um, Anthurium forgetii, same as the ones further up as well. These are just babies. We also have Anthurium, I think it's Villanoarum. That's growing quite well. These have had a little bit of a journey, as you can probably tell, but I think they're kind of stable now and they're growing much, much better. They've kind of taken off now. I believe at some point I had Crystallinum. I think this one here might be Crystallinum. I have a few different things, but I think generally that might be it. I don't know if this is crystallinum. I think the tag says it is a crystallinum, but it doesn't look like one to me. That's interesting. Probably keep that there for a while until we figure out what it is. So along this aisle, there is a lot to get through. Can you tell? So along this entire shelf here, I'll just let my cameraman kind of pan backwards and forwards. This is Monstera aurea. So everything on these three shelves is essentially yellow variegated Monstera. We do have a couple of large form variegated Monstera. So the one that grows super large, and I'll show you an example later on. Um, we do have a couple of these growing in amongst them. We know which ones they are because they've all been labeled. So we just tend to keep them here just to kind of check on them. They're growing pretty well. This tray here is very recent propagations from all of these along here. So these are doing really well. We do have, technically, we have a couple of elbows in with them, like this one Ray right back here. That's an elbow. I just kind of filled up the tray with them because I saw some additional ones that I could have taken off some mother plants further down and I popped them in this tray. But they're growing really, really well, to be honest. There's virtually no failures on them, which is really nice. This here is obviously all Aurea. It's got admittedly various levels of variegation. Some plants are doing better than others. For example, this one's fantastic. This one is not so much. So it's just a case of monitoring them clipping them down when they need to be and everything else. So I'll move on to these bottom shelves. This here is, honestly, this needs really like trimming up. It's a bit ridiculous. Here we have some Syngonium mojito, just sort of popping in and, you know, everywhere. And amongst that, we have some really beautiful Syngonium albo. This probably needs moved. I do have a proper tray for this. So this entire tray really needs sorting out. I think I've even got some yellow here. There's this, and I think there's another one in this tree. I think there's one further over here at the very back that's actually got yellow variegation. It just needs sorting out. It's a little bit unruly. I think it's been like this for a while now. Next to that, again, a little bit more of a mixed bag. We have a few things in here. This obviously is Pareso Verde. This here is a really random Syngonium album that's actually looking beautiful. That's a really nice balance of variegation there. After that, we have 
a really random philodendron burly marks, variegata in there. And the thing that is my favorite is this here. Now this doesn't look fantastic. Again, this is philodendron McDowell. It's not pastazanum, it is different from that. So these are the leaves that were there when I got the plant. These are some of the new leaves. And quite honestly, I'm debating moving these plants because I feel like they're getting too much light. They have been fed. So the colors that you see here, it's not that. I do think it's light. I think that they might just be getting too much. That's honestly why I haven't taken this leaf off here because I feel like it is actually providing some shade. But yeah, I think they need less light because I have one of these upstairs and it's doing much better and the lighting isn't quite as harsh. So I think I might move those. Those might not live there. We have more Aurea in here. We do have some random stuff. This is um, Xanthosoma Mickey Mouse. And in all of that, you may be able to see this here is Monstera Burley Marks Flame, and I know it's small, but it's all we have. This is such a slow grower. I can't, like, I can't even tell you how slow this grows. It's not even funny. So it's not a quick grower. It hasn't even started to fenestrate yet, but I'm really pleased to have it and it's healthy. It's doing fine. I think it's just one of those plants that just don't, they just don't grow quickly. It's not like a typical Monstera because normally Monstera grow really quickly. That, that ain't it. That's really not even remotely applicable to this plant. These, I think, are getting a little bit too much light right now. This is just a general amalgamation of philodendron, luxuriance, chocolate red. They look like this. The red backing can vary a little bit um, according to light conditions, but generally, this is what they look like. They're very cute. They're looking a little bit gangly because I've chopped the hell out of them to propagate from them. So later on, you might see some propagations kind of knocking around the shop. On here, I'm gonna talk about this because everyone asks me about it. This here is Alocasia Zabrina reticulata. It looks very similar to an Alocasia Zabrina, except it displays this really weird, I don't even know how you'd refer to that. Um, I will let you know that it is actually part of the plant. It's not um, viral, it's not ill, it's just this is generally how it is. It just chills like this. So this is the only one I've got. It lives here at the minute. It does need repotting. I need to kind of do that, that's on my list. This here, oh God, I wasn't gonna talk about this, but I feel like I can't not now because it's, it's kind of on camera. This is Philodendron Burley Marks Fantasy. It's not doing its best. I need to, honestly, I need to propagate it. I need to grow it properly. I just haven't had a lot of time recently. I've been very busy. So this needs sorting out, but at least it is growing, I guess. We have a nice little vine going. This is not a good example of the plant. Um, basically, you need to imagine this leaf here that's in my hand much bigger. And that's essentially how the plant grows, just a bigger version of that. They're really, really cool. They have like a kind of blue green appearance to them. I really love them. I just really need to grow it bigger because that's, that's not ideal, is it really? So this is the second aisle. There is a lot in here. We have obviously that's the other half of the Aurea. We have some various philodendrons, some monstera, some Thai up here that I will probably not be able to show you when we go round. Philodendron Jerry Horn, Philodendron Mexicanum. I think there's some Syngonium Albo, some more Pareso up there. There is a lot. There is even more Jerry, even more Florida Ghosts. There is a whole ton of stuff above me, but for now, it's probably a good idea to just focus on what is at eye level. So I'm gonna skip this because we've done this section. We know what they are. This here, or this here, I should say, is essentially all of my Philodendron Gloriosum. Now I'm pretty sure there's different forms of Gloriosum in here. Some of them are brighter than others in terms of veining. Some of them have pink backs. Some of them are darker. There's kind of a mixed bag. So I have a lot of these here that are my mother plants. And down here, the ones that aren't looking so good, these are actually propagations. Actually, I'm saying this now, I do actually have more propagations in the shop. I've just noticed them off camera, but it's in the other aisle. But oh. I've got more than this. I've just remembered I've got more than this. But yeah, these aren't looking so great because they're brand new propagations. And I was expecting about 50% of them to turn a little bit. You might notice some intruders 
in here. I think this is Philodendron Plowmanii. Again, hasn't done so well with propagation, but it's okay. Some of them are growing a new, new set of leaves. This one, for example, that's on its way in. That's looking very, very beautiful. It's kind of hit and miss. Like this Gloriosum here is doing fantastic. You know, this Gloriosum here is not. Obviously, it just depends kind of how it goes. This is a different type of Gloriosum, I believe, because if you look at this and this, this one has much brighter veins than this one. So I'm pretty sure that's a different type. This one here is clearly pink backed, as is this one here. These are all propagations as well. So again, if they're not looking super amazing, that's probably why they're just kind of establishing at the minute. So here, this is ridiculous. <laughs> This here is Monstera Eskeleto, and there's a lot of it, to be honest. I think this is a full tray. We do have some, again, some random intruders further back, but generally speaking, this tray is Monstera Eskeleto. Now, this was known as Monstera Epipremnoides, maybe about a year ago, two years ago, something like that. It's not anymore. It's known as Eskeleto. Some of these are propagations, some of them aren't. It actually depends. This leaf is kind of hiding an awful lot of them, to be honest. There's most of them. So some of them are looking a little bit tired because perhaps they've been the leaves that, you know, the plant has been shipped in with and everything else. But the leaves we're getting, these nice dark ones, they're coming in quite nice. So I'm pretty happy with those. What else have we got? Uh, I'll stand this way. This here is a tray of philodendron Burley Marks Fantasy, and honestly, I really need to get the scissors out and have a little chop at this because a lot of this is reverted. Again, if I show you the, the sheer extent of these plants, it's a little bit ridiculous. Look at that there. That's a lot. That's a lot of work. That's like an afternoon just to sort out this one plant here. There's an awful lot. So yeah, I need to chop these back. I mean, this one here's definitely got a lot of green on. Not completely because that one there's come back variegated look. So that one's fine, but these are green. So who knows? I need to chop this. Some of these here are great. You know, it's it's really a mixed bag of plants here, I would honestly say. It, need, it needs some work, should we say. Down here, I'll quickly move down here. This is, what is it? It's philodendron, jerry horn. Again, a lot of these are old transit damaged leaves, but I do leave them on because it helps the plant grow, of course. They're still healthy leaves. They can still photosynthesize all the rest. So I do leave them on. This is a really cheeky philodendron prince of orange. Um, that's supposed to be orange. I, I think I cut it off a mother plant that's now on the living wall, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, and I just propagated it. So now it's growing. That's why that's there. Uh, we'll do this tray here. Why not? I can't really mention that. That's just kind of just unruly, isn't it, really? Not, not much point mentioning that. I think that's Philodendron Florida Bronze up there. But as I say, I can't even touch it. So there's not a lot of point talking about it. So this tray is really interesting. We have a lot of stuff in here. So these here are baby Anthurium regal, as it happens. These are growing really, really well. I've had these a while. I think I got these in before Christmas. And if you look here, they're growing so beautifully. Like I'm really, really proud of these. So we have these here that are kind of dotted about. We have what looks like a cheeky choco red there, propagation that's growing really well, clearly. We have some baby gloriosum that are just chilling. Uh, what else have we got? I think that's glorious. I don't think that's actually gloriosum, that one. I'm pretty sure that's glorious. We have some other unnamed props, some more choco in kind of like a pot in there. We have this guy right here that is part of this plant here that I'm kind of copying together. This is Philodendron Linamii. This is super, super rare and it's super, super awesome. You can't really see why it's awesome right now, but when new leaves come in, they come in like this gorgeous hot pink color. And then over time they fade down to a green color. So it's really pretty. It's just not shown in all of its glory right now. And the thing that I don't fully know what it is, but we do have a name for it here. We call this guy here Mysterious Dark Boy because he's dark and he's mysterious because we don't know what he is. There's been many theories as to what he is and the theories have changed as he has grown because right now he's presenting himself to look an awful lot like Anthurium mudinum. Um, just the way he's kind of, I mean, if I turn him around, he's just really sexy, he's really dark, he's really interesting. And he, the leaves do stay dark for a while. This is an older leaf and it's still just as dark look. 
That's exactly the same color. This is an older leaf, so that's gone more green. But he's oh, he's just awesome, but I can't actually tell you what he is because we're not quite sure. It's definitely got to have Mudinum in it, I think. It's just a question whether it's full Mudinum or it's a hybrid. The person that sold me this plant didn't know. I think the person said that they were quite strongly leaning towards the fact that it was a hybrid. I don't know. Answers in the comments. We're really not sure at this point, to be quite honest. Um, oh, some mixed bags down here. Really mixed bags, actually. This, as you can probably tell, is Philodendron Pink Princess. These are doing so much better than what they were, despite being smaller. So when I got these, the leaves were, I mean, they were like this. They're essentially just green. If you look at the bottom of the plant, you can see. And it's not just this one, it's others as well. But as it's grown, it's finally got its mojo back and it's putting out a lot more pink. So that's really, really nice to see. Next to that, for some odd reason, <laughs> I have Philodendron Domesticum variegata, just chilling. This one probably needs cut as it's turned yellow. Now, I haven't cut it yet because I was genuinely waiting to see if the growth would survive because there will still be some chlorophyll in it. And I thought, hey, if I can grow just a yellow one, then cool. But that leaf died off very recently. So I'm leaning towards needing to cut it because I don't think it's going to survive, but I'm kind of hopeful. There is another one behind it as well that is small, but it's, it's growing variegation. So that's good as well. Next to that, down here, I have some Syngonium albo, and I can't remember if these are the propagations or the mothers. I think they're props, so I think there's not long now, sorry, there's pawn on my leaves, not long now before they probably leave. I think this is a cheeky little yellow variegated Syngonium. I don't know how that's happened. I guess it was presenting more white at the time. But I think this one's yellow and the rest are white. I do have a cheeky little Syngonium mojito in here as well. I have some, it says there, Syngonium albo nodes. They obviously just haven't, haven't really presented variegation, which is a shame, but it's okay because I always pick the best out of, you know, what's growing to kind of pass on. So this here will be the mothers, and I'm sure if I start pulling them out, you can see the fact that I've cut them. Although I'm looking at them now and I can't find any of the cuts. Here, for example, this is where the plant has been originally propagated and then obviously I've let it grow on. Very soon, this one can be propagated and then planted and then grown on from that. So I tend to keep these here for mothers. I think that's kind of it. I do have some Pareso Verde up here. As I say, I've got so many things growing in so many places. I'm not even sure what is all the way up there. I don't know if my cameraman can even get what's up there. There's a lot. It is just so much. <laughs> it's slightly overwhelming, if I'm totally honest. Oh, I forgot about the UPI. Fair enough, I forgot about the UPI. And then a cutting of an eel mani eye as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So I'll start with the eel mani eye. I'll pull it out because it's easier for you to video that. This here is a little baby cutting of philodendron eel mani eye. It's growing. It's, it's cute. It's had a little bit of a journey, this one, but it's growing and it's cute. We're leaving it here because it's a bit higher value. Um, same as the Monstera Burley Marks Flame here. It's in the same place. Similar to that, I have the beautiful Philodendron UPI. This is actually a head cutting of my mother plant. I mean, it lobbed its head off the other day before I planted it. This is a new leaf, by the way, that's why it's paler. This is an older leaf here, and it is huge. As you can see against my arm, but he's quite a large boy. So I'm really happy with him. I don't know what I'm going to do with him. I might keep him to be a new mother plant. I haven't decided yet. I might put him on the wall. I don't really know. But for the moment, he's rooting and he's quite sexy. I like him a lot. I think that's it for this aisle, would you say? Yeah? Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff. Let's move on to the next aisle before I lose my mind. So this aisle here is, oh my God. Okay, so it, it's, I don't know what to call this. I'm gonna be brutally honest with you and tell you that there isn't the amount of organization that I would like, and it's a little bit overgrown. So I'm gonna explain it this way before I take you down you know, the aisles that we can see. So right at the top, we have the most amazing Monstera Dubai that you can find. Um, <laughs> 
it's been there a while and it's just sort of chilling like a tree right now but if you look at this if i can just wiggle this this is a little bit nuts this here is also monster the buyer i think all the way down these vines here and it's just it's just running and it's it's propagating so really obviously i should be chopping these plants right here and planting that and having more dubaya but quite honestly i haven't really had the time same thing for the dark lords this is all philodendron um dark lord here it's absolutely massive that's a little bit overgrown as well down here again you can see a really good example of what's going on this is again monstera dubaya looking all big i should probably mention actually because a lot of people might not know when monstera dubaya is smaller it shingles like this but when it gets mature, because I don't think a lot of people know this, it turns into this absolutely awesome beast here. So it loses all of the silver and then it just becomes this really long kind of holy chunky boy. So it's really quite sexy. But anyway, these have grown so long in the absence of me being able to do anything about it. Absence of scissors absence of scissors 100 <laughs> percent. but basically it's grown so much the aerials this is aerial root and it's this long and let me tell you it feels absolutely beautiful that's really therapeutic that i like that it's really really soft but yeah so i need to cut them is the moral of the story here and i haven't yet so they're a little bit all over the place um there's no point in taking the camera right into this bit because honestly some stuff is bagged up it's all over the place but I'll just pull something out. This here is one of my Monstera oblique uh, little babies that are growing. It's very, very cute. I'm growing this one in moss. It's just starting to put out holes. So that's really, really sweet as well. I've got some other really random stuff in here, you know, various variegated anthurium, things like that. Some more obliques down there. Uh, some stuff in bags. This here is a random gloriosum as it happens i think that's glorious it's just it's it's a little bit of a mess i'm not gonna lie so that's a little bit unruly that one um random tie just kind of chilling it needs <laughs> needs to lift up is what it does i think i'm going to propagate this and stick this on the wall because it's it's not really helping anybody being here right now down here i should have mentioned this before this is a mixed bag it's philodendron mexicanum here with this beautiful burgundy underside and then here we have a beautiful philodendron. I think it's Lime Fiddle. It was sold to me as Philodendron Golden Dragon, but quite honestly, I can see that it isn't that. On closer inspection, that there's no way this is Golden Dragon. This, this has to be Lime Fiddle. Still a beautiful plant. I haven't really done anything with it since I brought it in, to be honest. I planted it up in Koya and I've kind of let it be, but I can see already I'm gonna have headaches because if I move these out of the way, you can see that yeah that's solid there's there's plants rooting into other plants so that's that's really awesome that that's what we call a day's work <laughs> separating them so that's why we keep it like a bush because i'm afraid to touch it so underneath the amalgamation of dubai i mean look at this guys seriously this is an aerial route is it off dubai as well well it must be Tie root, it does look like a tie root however if i shake it um, oh no it is no you're right you're right it's a tie it? root it's yeah. a tie root that's an aerial root off the tie <laughs> that's an aerial root off the tie so that's a thing so if you move that back mixed bag here we have a really random really random aglaonema pictum tricolor just just literally chilling um this is some syngonium that's obviously reverted I don't know if it was Albo, I don't know if it was Mojito, but it's gone. I suspect it might be Albo because there's Albo there. This is a really cheeky little Amedrium medium, uh, the green form, I think. This is, <laughs> why is this here? It's Philodendron Holtonianum, yeah. I don't, I don't know why that's there. This will be a reverted Philodendron strawberry shake, as if I pull that back, you can see just how much it's grown. Yeah, I know. That should have been cut a long time ago. Classic example of stuff that just just kind of gets missed, I suppose. It's it's easy to happen in here. It's pretty easy to miss stuff. If it's at eye level, generally we're good. Um, if it's not, it's kind of it's up to chance a little bit. So this over here looks not so great. I'll try and move in towards it so my cameraman can get in. This here is, I believe, 
Philodendron Pastazanum white, am I correct? Yes. Um, just brought in, that's why it looks terrible, this is turning. So this was brought in maybe a week ago, something like that. So this one's not doing so well. This one is doing a little bit better, but the lower leaf is going, so that's a shame. Of course, I'm sure it'll be fine, it'll grow back. So if I can just get in front of the plants, this is, I know there's so many, I'm literally just backed onto them. This here is a little bit odd looking because we've had this actually bagged up, but this here is Anthurium King of Clarinervium. Very, very special. I don't think we know the parents. It's Clarinervium and something else we don't know, do we? No. no. Very, very special Anthurium. And it's, I think it's called an F1 hybrid, which basically means it's incredibly variable the appearance of each plant because every plant here is the same plant all of these little ones and the plants just present very differently i mean i say that they look the same they just like some of these plants can have for example the lobes on the plant are much further apart like this and they're more handlebar shaped and then you get some others that are closer together the markings can be more or less they can just vary an awful lot but I'm propagating those at the minute and it's going really, really well. This here, this uh, is quite a long boy actually, if I can manage to turn around safely. This here, oh, don't want to break the flower. This is Anthurium Magnificum. This is basically here because we're waiting to pollinate this little guy. So he's on close watch at the minute so we can, we can do some, some magic, shall we say, with some pollen late at night and get it going. So that's why he's there. <laughs> Sounds so dirty. <laughs> That's why he's there. We're basically watching the inflorescence to make sure that we get it on time because there's a very narrow window of doing this and we're quite new to doing it. So that's why he's there. It's a very random tray. Next tray, again, a little bit random. This is some more of the Mexicanum that was down there. This is, again, it's Philodendron Mexicanum. And if I didn't highlight it before, they come through really pretty. They get these really nice leaves and they come through a really beautiful burgundy. Obviously they're climbers, as you can probably see by the absolute mass of aerial roots. We have, what else do we have in here? We have a really random um, Anthurium vitari folium that's honestly a little bit bashed. I think it lived further up previously in a previous life. So it's kind of rehabbing down here. I have a really gorgeous Gloriosum that is, it's basically just got more white veining than a lot of others. If I show all of them, it's not doing the best. As I say, I, I kind of rescued it from up top, but it's just a lot brighter and it's a little bit different. It's got these secondary veins that you don't often see. So I'm kind of growing him out to see what happens with him. I have, I mean, I'm not going to go into all of it because I have just random chunks sitting here, but I have some variegated subhastatum in there. Just, just honestly, just loads of stuff. That's kind of a running theme here. One of my favorite trays, this here is beautiful. This is Syngonium aurea, which essentially means yellow variegated Syngonium. So it's like the white, only this stuff is yellow. It takes a little bit longer to become super yellow. So when leaves come in, they come in this kind of lime greeny color here. And then when they harden off, they turn into this, which is obviously like a creamy yellow color. Sometimes they can look a little bit more kind of creamy white, but it's really dependent. Like if you pan over the whole thing, you'll see that there's a little bit of variation and you can kind of tell where the new leaves are because obviously they look more lime green, but the more time goes by, they harden off and they, they just, they get really yellow and really sexy. So this is a mixture, I think, of mothers and props, a little bit of both. I don't have so many of these. I don't think these are as easy to get, but I keep them all here. They used to live further back there, but I've moved them recently and they're looking really, really sexy and they are genuinely one of my favorites because they're so easy. Honestly, not a lot of point mentioning that. There's just a lot of different stuff. If we didn't catch it before, this is all Dark Lord all up here. So Dubai at Dark Lord, that's the most of it, I would say. Isn't it really? That's just an amalgamation of that. So we'll come around to this aisle. So I didn't touch on the bottom portion of this aisle when we went round the other way. So this here is Variegated Monstera Peru. And I'm going to be completely honest with you, I'm struggling to grow these. I do find that they revert very quickly and I do find that they're prone to just generally crisping up, you know, any any remote problem that you could have with a plant. I honestly feel like I get with these. This one's running though, I've just noticed now, if you can see that. I know it's running, which is great, except 
if that's anything to go by, it's not really going to be variegated, which is a shame. But I'm doing my best with them. I do feed them. I do monitor the light. I do spray them against, you know, anything bacterial or fungal. It's just, they just hate me. I don't know why, they just hate me. It's not one of my favorite plants to take care of. I wouldn't say it was very easy at all. Down here, this is kind of, again, a mixed bag. We have here some Anthurium macrolobium. This is a hybrid of its pedatum. No, it's not. It's pedaradiatum or pedatum? Pedanobium and pedaradiatum. That's the one. That's it. Can't think of camera man. <laughs> <laughs> and we have some propagations of Monstera escalator. Again, these are really young. You can tell they're kind of going to turn a little bit before they settle. This here, this is beautiful. This is a propagation of Philodendron Choco Red. It's so, so beautiful. We have more than one propagation going here, obviously. Um, what I will say is, oh, that's the back of a leaf, by the way, if you want to know how amazing they turn. These plants are just not easy to propagate, or at least for me anyway. You might have a different experience, but for me, these are really difficult. I struggle with these a lot. I think I've cracked it. Like, I think I found a way to propagate them where I don't have as much loss, but we kind of need to see how they go. So we're kind of watching those at the minute to see how they go. This is not worth mentioning. That's just random stuff in there, I think. Some of it's, a lot of it's stumps, actually. I can't even tell you what they are. They might be chocos. Yeah, chocos. Are. They are chocos, cool. This over here is a giant cluster of Monstera Thai constellation. This has actually been with me since the last tour that I did about a year ago. Um, I really need to propagate it. I need to cut it down and regrow it. A lot of this is quite leggy. It just had a bad time last year. I was pretty busy um, kind of moving shops, so a lot happened. These didn't get the best light, and now they're a little bit leggy. So I need to cut them down and basically give them a new lease of life, propagate some of them. It's just a big kind of mass. To be honest, there's kind of stuff everywhere. In As soon as you get to this aisle onwards, I think the whole thing really is just a big mass of stuff that I kind of need to get to, I would say. Uh, yeah, I get to maintain the plants at the other end of the shop a lot more. It's kind of a process where I'm moving my way along and I'm just trying my best to propagate as I go. Yeah, there's not enough manpower to really do it that fast, as you might be able to tell. So it's just a battle, really, of just seeing how quickly I can get through a lot of these props. Case in point, the Thai constellation takes some time to get through. There might be a day to get through that, so. There's a lot to do. Moving over here. Oh, I'm, I'll mention it real quick. This is an absolutely gorgeous Philodendron Giganteum. He lives here and he is Giganteum, actually. I've only recently moved him here today. He did live somewhere slightly different, but he's really sexy. I don't know if I'm gonna keep him here, but right now, anyway, he's here. This behind me, right here, these are more shelves. I'm actually not gonna talk about them because to be honest, they're primarily propagations and as you might be guessing, we would be here all day. So I'm gonna leave these as they are, just know that they're propagations and there's, not, there's nothing really interesting happening. But the thing I think you probably do wanna see might be this. Um, this here is, I will stand here for scale. This is my absolutely giant living wall. Honestly, honestly, I don't really know where to start with this wall and I, I probably couldn't cover every single plant on here because there are so many. So that's probably a separate video if you want me to go into full detail on what's on here. So if you'd like to do that, then please leave a request down below and I will be sure to get on that. Until then, I guess the best way to talk about this is just in a general sense. So you may or may not know, I planted this wall, I think it was in September of last year, when I moved shops. 
I documented the entire process of moving from my old shop to my new shop and I will leave a link to that down below because I have a full playlist if you want to see the entire planting of this whole thing. But I planted this thing last year in September and it's done okay. There is a variety of different things on it. I couldn't tell you how many plants are on it. I couldn't tell you specifics. I just know that we have a few key pieces, I would say. For example, this beautiful Queen Anthurium. This was a very beautiful plant that I unboxed last year as well. I did a whole video unboxing that. That's done really well. It's acclimated quite nicely. We have, honestly, we have tons of stuff. We have some Melanochrysum up here on the left and the right. We, above that, have some Monstera Dubai as well, again, on the left and the right. We have a massive mixture of Philodendron Gloriosum. We've got, you know, bits of different types of Anthuriums, different vining plants that kind of cover the back wall, like Raphidophora Tetrasperma, more Anthurium, more Philodendron, some Monstera in the middle, once you come down to the bottom, you have a few different things for one thing. You have this guy here. This guy we've now decided to name as Tiny Boy because obviously he's tiny. These are one of his leaves just for total scale on the matter. He's absolutely massive. So that's Tiny Boy right there. Moving further down on the wall here, we have this gorgeous Philodendron Plowmaniae that's been recently replanted. Here he is down here growing a new leaf. Obviously, different bits and pieces, some more Tetrasperma, some more Anthurium, Monstera Eskeleto, some Philodendron Weeks Red. This is a plant that I, I really never hear anybody talk about. I don't know why that is, but this is a gorgeous big plant and it has beautiful backs to the leaves. That's an old leaf, so it doesn't have it anymore. That's an old leaf as well. Perhaps on the new leaf, there you go. You get this gorgeous burgundy color up the back of the leaves. Generally, that's what's on there. Again, it would take a hell of a lot of time to go into, but just know that not all of the plants on this wall are absolutely perfect. As you look across the wall, you will see different levels of, I would say, damage or acclimation. When we planted this thing in September, it's, you know, it's been a process, quite honestly. We've had various different issues with the living wall because we've never built a living wall before. Um, so some plants do show signs of damage here and there, but generally since September, this thing has acclimated really, really well. I would say we've had minimal loss, quite honestly. Most of this is intact. We've just very recently done a patch up of the living wall that you will probably see next week if you follow my channel quite regularly. But yeah, I'm pretty proud of it. It's it's huge. I don't know how tall it is or how wide it is. So if you pan all the way to the top of the living wall, you will see three amazing Monstera de Bayers. These Monstera de Bayers are growing from the wall and they are now transitioning from your basic shingler plant into essentially a tree. So there's three of them up there and I've decided to call them tree boys yeah. because they're gonna become trees at the minute. There's a little bit of a bet on as to which one is going to become a tree first. So essentially what I'm saying is which one is going to grow from being a shingler into EG, a leaf like this one right here above my hand. So at the minute, I would honestly say that the guy in the middle is winning. That's middle boy right there. I think he might take it. But then again, the boy on the right, he may, maybe, maybe. I don't know. It really depends. It really depends on the water and on the light and everything else. But in essence, anyway, that's my absolute giant living wall. As I say, I cannot take you through every plant on here. It would take hours. So that's probably its own video in itself. But it is something that I'm very, very proud of. And it's been really good to just kind of watch the journey of it and watch how it's grown and how it's flourished and how it's acclimated as well since it's been planted. So it's been planted for about six months now and it's obviously going very strong. So that's a really exciting process to follow. And I think with that, that actually concludes this plant tour. Obviously, again, it's not every single plant in the shop. That's not really possible. I'm not tall enough. There's too many plants to show you individually. It would just take too long. If you'd like to see a specific tour all about the living wall, again, please leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to do that. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. And if you'd like to see any more of my content, whether it be the living wall, whether it be the shop itself, whether it be any of the other content I make on rare plants, then please feel free to subscribe. Until then, 
I hope you have a great week, whatever you're doing, and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys. It was sold to me as Philodendron Golden Dragon, but quite honestly, I can see that it isn't that. If I actually pull this out. Thunder? What the fuck is that thunder? Is it gonna stop? So this over here is, it's, I was gonna call it a clusterfuck. <laughs> <laughs> you can't call No, that, that'd be the fucking, uh, now though, over there. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> yeah, we're putting that on camera. That's a, fuck that. Carry on. That's a fucking blue. Right, okay. Okay. Yeah. Debilis. Debilis? Yeah. Okay. You good? I know, I'm just giving you time to. Right. Work. <laughs> Carry on. Okay. Well, okay. So. <sighs> Right, ready? <laughs> yeah? Not yet. I will be in a minute. Go on, go on then. Are you ready? I think so. Are you ready? I'm, I was Feels born like you're ready. not ready. I did not realise I was born ready. I was born to do this. Born ready to do this. Alright. Go on then. Are you ready? Yeah, I was, I was literally ready. I was gonna move. I was ready. I was ready. Are you fucking ready? Actually, you give me vibes like you're not I'm, fucking ready. I'm like proper born ready. You know what I'm saying? Always. Were you stunted? What? And you don't seem ready. Fuck you. Fuck you. Stunted in what Fuck way? Fuck you. Well, you're a little short. <laughs> you're not the same height as me, bro. Now. You ready? <laughs> Are we born? <laughs> I swear to God, bitch. I'm gonna fuck you up. Uh, what? It's a clap. So these are still some of those same tie that I have left. What is this? What is this? What is this? So I'm gonna have to include it at this point, just in case the footage is this disjointed. You're probably watching this in the bloopers, but we have had to stop about six or seven times today because there has been actual thunder, actual thunder and rain. So guys, <laughs> guess who just flew a drone into the living wall, chopped the bottom of the melanoma off. Guess who that was? It was me, but it's a nice clean cut. Today. We're getting rid of all the- Dude! Uh, <laughs> oh dude, we I fucked know. it. Look at that, man. It could have been worse. No, it couldn't. <laughs> it could. Did I get a bit of that as well? Oh, see, that's how near it was. You You're kidding. That's how near it was. Oh. Exactly.